Board of Appeals meeting. Tonight we have uh, two things on the agenda. Uh, Diane O'Brien will be first, and then Byfield Estates will be second. So, uh, Diane, do you want to come on up? Diane O'Brien, 642nd Street, Plum Island, Newbury, Assessor's Map, U04-0-17. The applicant is requesting a special permit for relief from Section 97-4D of the Newbury Zone Bylaws. As proposed construction will increase the percentage of coverage on the lot. For the record, I would like to state that I was not at the first hearing, um, but that I have attended hearings with the O'Briens. I am very familiar with the case, and with their permission, I will sit in as the alternate tonight. Sure. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah, with, he's with Bench Conservation, so they have the expertise on that. Okay. Um, we're seeking a special permit because our project involved the slight increase of lot coverage down on Plum Island. There's going to be 48 square foot increase what we have now. So there was a plan attached to everybody's application. I have some substitution pages because we were about six feet off and the end result actually, um, the new figures are six feet in our favor. So what you have there is worst case scenario. Um, what we have the actual Do you have numbers. any copies of those? Yes, I have one for everybody. Okay, so if you could give us that before you proceed. We have three for us and one for two. Yeah. This is the only page that's No, this, okay. because on each page the numbers change slightly, so I just wanted them to be consistent. Two, this is 1920. Yeah, so that's fine. Yes. Okay. So what we did is when we redid the numbers, we took the plan that they had um, for the town and we recalculated all the numbers. And the existing lot is comprised of 6,316 square feet. The coverage on the lot right now is 18.56%. Um, the floor area ratio is 2198. We're not changing the premises at all. The actual house we're only going to. The project involves removing a non-conforming shed that is currently on the lot. Do you have this? There's a plan attached to each of here. Right. right now there's a shed that's right here that's on the lot and it is 6.4 feet off the side setback. Right. So that does not conform to the 10 feet requirement. We're going to remove that entire shed and it's not going to be replaced, okay? And then the deck that's currently here on, on the house is 10 by 10. Yep. That's gonna be replaced with a 15 by 16 foot deck and basically it's just gonna expand it a little bit there. Um, Everything that we're building is within the required setbacks, but it does result in a 48% square foot increase, even without the shed. So Not 48 feet. Oh, I'm 48, sorry, 48 yeah. square feet. Yeah, you'd be in trouble with 48 Yeah, that's what I would be here. Um, but really, that's it. I mean, we're not changing anything. If, if, it any, if anything, we are um, making the lot conform. More conforming. conforming. Yes, because we still have the frontage. And your lot's not conforming to begin with. That's true. Yeah. So. More conforming than it was. So I don't know if you have any questions or. I wonder if you could double check yep, the. Yeah, take your uh, time. Yeah, a couple, just a couple questions. But let me, let me just. Yeah, if you don't have any questions for the applicant. Just some small, but one of the things here. 
in the zoning ordinance requirements for lot, it says height, 125 feet. That should be 35 feet. No, no, it's, it's, it's just a... It's, it's just on the 100, application. Frontage is 125 feet. Height requirement is 35 feet. Okay. So, Correct. So, see, see what you have is 125 feet of height. Mm -hmm. That's a, it's a little high. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. It is. I don't think that was allowed. All right, so that was one. Two, on your site plan here, it says right there, 6,300 square feet. And I know this says for the purpose of the plan, the setback of the position of the dairy. So how do we get to the 16 square feet? It's not a big deal. That came from the assessor's, the assessor's office property. property. Survey? Survey? Oh, plan or plan. Or assessors. Yeah. I would think uh, the survey would be. Okay. It's still kind of more. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, we'll just get, you know, we the documents. And yeah. get right. that came I would go with the plum survey before I would go with the assessors. For, okay. So, <coughs> understanding that, we would, we would look to adjust these two pages. Check the math. And check that. So I think we're, we're talking 16 square feet. Right, so. Okay. So that was two. And then I had something about the rear. Any glasses down the rear step back. Mm -hmm. Oh, yours? Yeah. Um, no, 38.7. You want reading glasses? Is that a good Help me here. Okay. What's that? This is 32.6. 32.6. Right, so if... And that's what they have on the application. Okay, and then... To begin with, but the board's law is different. All right, so now we, you right. put 38 feet 9, and where's because that? Because the shed is going to be gone, and then the, the deck does not come out all the way where the shed was, it only comes to the beginning. Understood, but we, we, this is no longer here. This gets you to the house, and so there needs to be a new dimension So if we could take this one. Yeah. Take another one. Uh, it's right. Just so the record has it. Uh, does anybody want to speak in favor of this project? Anybody opposed? Any kind of discussion?
What did you say about the FAR? I said the FAR was increased, but still well under the requirement. It went from 21.98 to 22.03. It's all open duck, right? It's, it's, well, the lot size changed. Uh, I, I see what you mean. Relative to our understanding and our paperwork with the Okay. Yeah. All right. I, all right. It did not. Uh, yeah, I understand where you went with it. I just, I just want that clarification. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, okay. I will second the motion. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. You are welcome. Good luck. Take care. Thank you. We'll then move on to the Byfield Estates uh, project. Uh, the applicant isn't here, but they sent us a letter addressed to the zoning board. Uh, it refers to the Byfield Estates 40B application notice of withdrawal by the applicant Byfield Estates LLC. Dear Chairman Traster, Byfield Estates LLC as the applicant for a comprehensive permit under Chapter 40B of the Massachusetts General Laws for property at 55 Rear Pearson Drive in Newbury, hereby formally withdraws its comprehensive permit for the Byfield Estates. This application withdrawal is effective immediately. As the town has been made aware in uh, March 16th, 
Mass Housing Letter, Byfield Estates LLC has had its project eligibility rescinded and as such no longer meets necessary 40B requirements. I respectfully request that the Zoning Board provide me with a final accounting of the 53G account after final invoices for LEC Environmental and Cayman Engineering have been paid. I sincerely appreciate all the time and attention the ZBA has dedicated to this application. Please do not hesitate to contact me should you have any questions. I can be reached at the telephone number. Sincerely, Jeffrey Engler, Consultant to Bipeel Estates, LLC. So, any questions? <laughs> well, we don't know if we have the answers, but yeah, we, yes, did, sir. They, did they cite why the uh, state rescinded the approval? They did. And it was? Uh, what? The application was uh, misrepresented. So I would say based on their misre misrepresentation to the state, which was included in the application to you people, then you can therefore reject their their outright for fraud, for misrepresentation to you. No, no, that's not how it works. The, the state has the final say. No. So they, they what I'm saying is, withdraw their application. Uh, and you have to dispose of it, correct? We have more than one option. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We can accept their withdrawal, or yeah. we can deny it because it was an ineligible application. And so which so we what, have a couple of choices. Which is what I'm suggesting we should do, is, with, is deny it. Right. It'll have no effect on any uh, subsequent re uh, reapplication. reapplication, no matter what we do. But it may discourage someone from picking up the pieces of what they've done and running with it. Yes, sir. Uh, what, was, was, what was the misrepresentation? Was it material? Was it no, the. Uh, there was a question that said, Have you ever been involved in a felony eviction or conviction? And they said no, and that was not the case. So, <laughs> so, they, so to go back on that, they falsified information to the state. Uh, provided to the state, right. which is in turn felony, another felony. Well, and then subsequently, there it was false information to receive federal funding, which is a federal felony. Well, you're, you're I know I'm just not, I just want to be on the record saying all that because right. that's the case here. Right. So, so if somebody else decides, uh, no, I think we're okay. Go ahead. So <laughs> this this person, this entity, would have to transfer the property to another entity who would then presumably right. look at uh, I would assume so. picking it up. I would assume um, so. Do they have to start from scratch or do they come in where these other people left off? Not sure. No, they have to reapply. Right, um, they have to reapply. Yeah, they have to, so right. they have to go through the site approval process and they have to go through mass housing and get their approval again. It has to come to the town has to go through the first level um, of approval with planning and the board of selectmen, and then it eventually will come here, assuming it's passed right. all of its tests. So it has to start from scratch. Right, right. but they could come back with all, using all the information yeah. that's already right. been worked on. Which would expedite the so, process. So the housing authority did allude to the fact that if the mm -hmm. substantially same project came back in, that they could expedite their end of it. It doesn't necessarily mean that we have to do that, but it means that they could do that. Operative words substantially same. <laughs> um, that's a good question because that's really up to the housing authority, so they'd have to determine what it is. But um, my guess is that if it had the same number of units and you know if it was really okay. the same project, that they so that's what I mean. They help if expedite they, it. If they took all their information and resubmitted it. Even though they have to go through those steps, then those steps are accelerated. And with, we with, as Doug said, with the state, but not necessarily with us. Okay, all right. That's what I was trying to, to right. clarify. Right. So I, 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I, just, yeah. I thought you had the option to, um, now to either deny it based on the information that you had already received and point of fact, make it a decision or dismiss the, the application? 
Are there any other questions to address before the board gets to that mm -hmm. point or not? Oh, Does anybody okay. else have any other yeah, questions? Just, or? There was a signed contract real estate that was going to expire, I believe it is. Uh, and I just oh, wondered if there's any question about ownership, sale of the properties involved, meaning specifically the house of 55 Pearson and the land. You don't know nothing, nothing, we know nothing, nothing yeah. that's been given okay. to us. Yeah. Okay. We, we don't know really any more than you do. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just a, one quick question I got. Yes. So, mass houses that went ahead, they got the application. Right. Oh, did they vet that themselves or did someone, because I know did, one of my We have neighbors, no idea. Yeah. Because yeah. one of my neighbors was there and I remember saying, I was saying, oh, he, there was a, he was indicted, well, he ticked off, not indicted, he did some homework. Well, maybe, maybe somebody I think between what planning, mass planning had identified and what uh, some of Butters had gleaned out of that, too. Uh, okay. that they might that have brought was, that to a mass yeah, housing's yeah. attention, and yeah. then maybe they were just going to, what I'm kind of getting at is, is that somewhere in the state, somewhere in the, uh, the state level, the state house, there's got to be needs to look at the mass housing and say, hey, listen, okay. you guys are not doing your work. You understand we can't address any I know, yeah. <laughs> so, so I know, that's why I can sign it right, so right. so we can as a group sign right, right. To, um, to the state, right. to the you, government. You, you can do anything you want. Yeah. <laughs> I just, uh, if I could get a clarification relative to whatever you decide in, in terms of what another entity may have to produce or not produce. Now, if if you just accept their um, withdrawal versus deny their application, does it require um, going forward a new entity having to maybe start from scratch versus get back? back. Well, I, I, that was a part that I was a little confused. It sounds like they could get fast tracked, and I'm wondering if. Okay. Hey, let me try to explain it again. They can get fast track with mass housing, mm -hmm. but not they can't you get fast track with the zoning. Okay. Board. So, so, okay. Yeah. Not so to say that they wouldn't ask for it because we were further along in the process mm -hmm. than someone who would be presenting an absolute new application mm -hmm. because we were close to kind of wrapping up some of the peer review. So I think it won't discourage them from <clears throat> asking us to try and move it forward a little bit quicker. However, it doesn't mean that there's still some unfinished business mm -hmm. that hasn't been completed as a result of the last review. Okay, then I guess my question then stands as to um, if you just accept the withdrawal versus deny it, does it start any new entity um, do they have to begin in a different way, or does it really not? Matter? Probably maybe putting the full denial letter and going through all that now is maybe not the best course of action to play our hand, mm -hmm. as opposed to just letting them withdraw. They have a backer or a funder. Mm -hmm. They have a builder. They have site um, negotiated um, purchase agreements, and they have all the work that is done. If somebody fills out a whole new application, somebody else is <coughs> a funder on it, that has, doesn't, hasn't gotten in trouble in the past, mm -hmm. and then they file all the documentation that is most current, that is what we would receive. So a lot of our questions about certain civil sizes and engineering would have already been answered or being in the process of being answered, it would be expedited whether we liked it or not in some cases. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that the next person that picks it up sees something in the, the numbers that maybe they change things, and if there are any changes, then, then we have to figure out how to uh, review that again. Okay, and I, I just, I, I guess specifically I was thinking of, and it's not limited to this, but like the environmental reporting relative to uh, the vernal cooling and all that testing. I think there was um, certainly some dispute and question as to whether or not it, uh, whether or not it was conducted correctly at the right time, et cetera. And now if we're looking at two or three years down the road, uh, my question is, well, would they need to, you know, revisit that? I mean, how could they possibly rely on a report that's maybe really not totally accurate or appropriate, and it's from two or three years, you know, previously? I'm just curious to know whether or not they have to maybe go through that same due diligence, uh, you know, going forward. It depends on the length of time. Um, okay. Your wetland filings, your wetland flaggings are generally good for two years. Okay. 
Um, so if it isn't over the two year period and they came back into conservation, um, and especially where they started a couple of years ago, and because of the work we've done, the environmental work, those lines have all been updated right almost to the present. So um, I gotta say that our, uh, the people that we've had representing us have done a great job on the environmental end of it. And we, okay. we haven't got a final report from them <clears throat> So we don't even know where they, uh, where the applicant and our consultant wound up. Okay. So we can't answer that. Would you okay. be getting a report, or you just no, stop it? No, we're done. Good. What's that? I think you just answered my question. So it sounds like there's still ongoing. There was ongoing. It was work. ongoing until but, the withdrawal. So what, now that you make a decision, everything you stop working. We stop. <coughs> yeah. do something else. Yeah, we can't make a decision. And we like can't we can continue, continue authorizing, on authorizing the work. We can't continue authorizing payment of that work because it had been withdrawn. And you'll never know what if there's another application, whether it will be the same. And, and, and you get you're not ready to. You probably can't make a decision then, depending on what you do. Right. Exactly. Yes, sir. Just one uh, on the environmental issues. You know, during this process, it was discovered that some of the wetlands had been filled in. Mm -hmm. uh, the, my question is, uh, will that be followed up with the landowner? Will the, will the town have some uh, recourse, yeah. recourse to require that to be returned? Or It's a good question. We kind of had them to the spot where um, they were likely to replicate it for us because it's not a big deal and they don't want to get into a fight. If it comes after going after the homeowner, the statute of limitations is two years after discovery or three years after change of hands. My understanding is it was a previous homeowner that did this filling. Uh, if this present owner bought this over three years ago, then then again the statute is run. Um, so I'm again I'm unsure of those time frames. What's the percentage of um, 40B housing that the town of Newbury has currently? Almost zero. I, I don't know the exact. I forget what it is, but it's almost one or two percent. It's it's way down. Three yeah. percent. It was way officially down. the state recognized three percent. Yes, sir. Um, on the letter, you, you have uh, two choices to withdraw or uh, without prejudice. Can you explain that concept to me? I, can't, I, I don't understand that. Uh, uh, withdrawing without prejudice allows them to take their application, they leave the table. We find no prejudice, meaning that there's no, uh, there's no good night clause, there's no time period for them to bring it back. Um, we just find without prejudice. Um, we can deny the project. Our attorney that has been with us all along tells us that either of those processes in this case are pretty much the same. Uh, one doesn't mean much more than the other. That's the information. That's all the information we've gotten from him. I'm just trying to get the, the best leg up on. on the I table. understand. <laughs> uh, we've been thinking of the same thing. Thank you. Individually, we've been you know thinking about it on our own. Okay. And this is actually just for my neighbor who's not here. I missed the part when he was here last. Uh, he had raised some uh, issue relative to uh, the actual uh, information coming out of the Byfield Water Department and whether or not you know we had sufficient project water demands. Uh, what the impact would be for for any buildings, uh, any additions, and there was some email that he he, he got. I, he went down, I think, to the town today, relative to that. It seemed to be suggest that um, we use our max volume daily here, plus a hundred thousand dollars, which is uh, uh, sorry, not dollars, a hundred thousand additional gallons per day. Right now, we're at the max. And this guy, Paul Colby, has an email there that says that, uh, it basically says the DEP, DEP made it clear that it would be very difficult for Byfield to get their registered volume increased at all. So if that's the case and that's accurate, I'm just, I, I figured I'd bring it up now because it seems that it's gonna be an issue going forward if somebody else makes an application. The good part is their permitting is taking place right now. I think as of, it was sometime in February, they had to have their application in for new withdrawals. I think the new withdrawals are a 15-year permit. I think they go out to 2035. And so, uh, so that so has right, not they're, they're, So they're looking okay. at these withdrawals. They're looking at the stressed watershed. Um, they're they're take, looking at all of that right now. Okay. So it's very timely. So it's unknown at this point, though, in terms of, uh, but 
It, it is to me anyway. Okay. Yeah, and, at this point. Yeah, okay. that's nothing this board can deal with. Right. Well, that okay. seems to be some real information. If, if, I, if, I know, but we we have I'm nothing. Right now. Well, we I, have I don't no want to get into a dance. I'm just saying, no. if if we use our max volume, and and our our the gentleman who runs the Byfield Water Department says that we're not going to be able to uh, be approved for any additional volume. Right. How can he then say, oh yeah, you can put 24 uh, units down at the end of Pearson? It doesn't make any sense. You just can go with 100% mitigation is what DEP is going to head for. If, you, if you're already stressed and you can't take any more water, so every drop of water this guy uses in this subdivision would have to be accounted for somewhere else whether it be a donation that he gives to Byfield Water for leak detection and they can, they can mitigate the, his use through leak detection, whether he buys low flow devices for the town. I mean, there's ways when you can deal with this. Byfield Water would not say to another applicant for a single family home, no, sorry, you can't build a single family home on that lot because we don't have the water for you. So if we're not gonna say it to that guy, we can't say it to the 40B. Okay, anything? Different than anybody wants to ask or talk about. I'm just curious about the certification of the vernal pools with the National Heritage Program. I know that was kind of a contingency, but I don't know. Uh, did it, we we got we. Those were all submitted. That yeah, one of them submitted. is certified. There's a number for it already. I'm yeah. pretty sure I've seen that. And the other one was in process. The last I saw. Her. But okay. once this happened, we're done with this. Uh, we're not, um, you know, we're not even thinking of this any further right, down right. these lines at the moment. We're here every third Thursday of the month. So come on in. We'll advance the Because the town now has the opportunity to do something proactive, like come up with their own plan. Because if they go up with a friendly 40B, then we now have the ability to deny an unfriendly one. Does this give us the opportunity to do that? Yes, I think that if the planning board did some inclusionary zoning, uh, made themselves a safe harbor in some way, then we could potentially use that safe harbor as long as we're working towards that end and we can document that we're working towards that end. Generally speaking, that'll give you a little bit of breathing room. Uh, but the, how but the timing is crucial, of course, right? What's yeah. that, Lenny? The timing is crucial. It would have to happen pretty quickly before someone else picks up this project. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, okay. absolutely. So you're not aware of them doing that? I am not aware at this time of them doing that. Can you answer that, George? Nothing is running right now, and it would have to go through town meeting. It's not going to hit May. The earliest would be in the fall. So, uh, so what you do you know, suggest? Yeah. Well, the planning board has to discuss it. You, you can go to a planning board meeting and uh, bring it up to them. Right. Yeah. Write them, email them, whatever you <laughs> Okay, so if there's nothing else, we're going to close the meeting to your questions and discuss what we may or may not do. So nobody has anything different. That's where we are. Do you have an opinion, Eric? I uh, tonight. I wonder what Paul told you in terms of recommendation. He, he said he was. I, I just asked him um, if there was any um, difference in whether the board accepted the withdrawal as submitted or if the board did not them. Did they have that option? And if they did, what was the significance of any? He said there really wasn't. You could do either, mm -hmm. neither of which would impact their ability to come back um, with any, any limited time frame. So the board could do whatever they felt most comfortable. So my thought was is if we deny them and write a full letter and explain all the issues that we had against them in reasoning and then had a full list of conditions that we would be basically playing our hand where they would then, the next person would have that and right. we could use that as a checkbox just to basically expedite again. Um, also, if we rejected it and didn't have and didn't put the time in to make the best denial, it's just going to go back to mass housing and it, it, um, it, it's just going to cause more work in a direction we don't want to go and instead of putting the effort in and, and having an application and doing that exact application with the best condition possible. 
I, I hate to set up a couple of odd bookends, but I'm kind of feeling the other way. Okay. I'm feeling that it more accurately describes it, that they're not really withdrawing this application. They don't have any choice. Um, they are denied for an improper application. They do not have, you know, they lie on their application. So I don't know how involved we'd have to get with the denial other than to say, um, you don't have an eligible application because you lied on it. Okay. So uh, I tend to lean towards Doug's thought, but I also wonder if we should have Paul write. Oh, we should definitely have Paul write it. Absolutely. No, 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 no. Just, none of us have that any experience in that. Right. So it's something I would not want on my shoulders. So in writing that, how would you? Get the most out of that. Well, I guess that would be up to Paul, and, and I would find for this particular tract contingent upon him agreeing that it's it's the way that, that we would go. It's the way that we should go. You understand too that we don't have Paul anymore. Alright, so, we'll, so okay. well, in, in essence, don't we have him for the rest of this process though? The process is so, closed right now. So can't why can't we go to town council? They, we have, could a, go to they have a representative. But as it relates to Paul and his right. okay. experience then I would have with Adam. this project. Yeah. Yeah. So Adam Cross could probably even better. Yeah. 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 Um, I just think we need somebody that's experienced with this. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Without, without, without question. Yeah. Without question. Right. And we do have town council yeah. with one of, one of their uh, partners that this is his expertise. Right. Are we chasing? Shedding light on all the everybody, all the applicants in this, in terms of. Or, or no, I think we only can. The applicant is the money man. Okay. You can only base it on the letter that we got. Right. It was right. Yeah. So you you can't go with a consultant. You can't go with a builder. You can't with their engineers. There. I think. Uh, so you can't make any comments about them. It's a letter of accepting their withdrawal with the conditions and assumptions that they basically submitted a fraudulent right. application. Right. Um, yeah, but I'm not using the word withdrawal. I'm using the word denial. Right. Right. Okay. I, I, I think that's the way to go. So okay. if, we, if we vote on doing that, then we need to continue until we uh, talk to town council? That would be your final act in the matter, so yeah. Yeah, continue. I mean, it's, yeah, because, I mean, they've already withdrawn, right. you know, as far as they're concerned, you know, they're, they're not right. taking any more right. um, action, so, yeah, definitely, I can talk with them and have them draw up a letter for review for right. the next time we meet, right. that or prior to. What's that? That and final billing. Right, I do have a final bill tonight from LEC. I'm still waiting for a final bill from Camden. So uh, we just need to vote to say that we are um, denying, not denying the project, and uh, we'll ask town council to draft a letter draft based letter. on. And then we'll re-meet and take a final right. vote on the letter. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're basically citing the content within the mass housing right. letter yeah, as exactly. the basis of the denial, right? Yes. I just yes. want to make sure I'm on the yeah. same yeah. way. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay, so do we have a motion to do that? I move that we deny the project on the information contained in the withdrawal letter. Second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Can I make a suggestion that everybody call the hobby department and <laughs> say, so what are we getting paid? Hey, can you do not do that? Hey, now under the planning board. Okay, so yeah. uh, we have a motion uh, to close the meeting. I move to adjourn. Nice. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.